everyone. I'm Erin Hardick, Z Prime's lead research analyst. I'm here in Washington, D.C. at the Grid Connects conference uh, with Jan Vrintz. Jan leads Navigant's global energy practice. How are you today, Jan? I am doing excellent. It's a little bit cold here for me um, coming from, uh, from Miami, but other than that, we're doing, uh, we're doing great and we're having some interesting discussions about uh, the grid of the future in uh, North America as well as in Europe. We just had an interesting presentation by Lauren Smith about what's happening in Europe with the, the, transformation, the, the transition and, and distribution companies there. It was very interesting to see what they well, I'm certainly cold too. As a Texan, I don't handle this weather well. So one thing that's very popular right now, it's very relevant, is climate change and this idea of how we are affecting the environment with, with our business practices. And you actually live in an area where you're realizing and seeing the effects of climate change in your own community. Can you talk about how climate change has been relevant to you both personally and professionally during this time of transformation where I think people are realizing they need to do something, but it's, it's still kind of just getting underway? Sure, yeah. Well, well personally, um, last year, uh, my family uh, and I had to actually evacuate uh, where we live. We live in, in Coconut Grove, pretty close to the water. Um, and with the, uh, with the hurricane coming over, uh, we had to drive up to Orlando um, and get out of the, out of the way. Uh, although there was really nowhere to go in Florida where you would not be impacted by, by this storm. It was, it was, it was big. Um, um, nevertheless, we had six foot of water in my neighborhood. Um, uh, the hurricane really uh, uh, hit uh, Naples, but we had got the back end of the storm, which then led to a lot of surge and, and, and flooding. Uh, again, six foot of water in, in, in our neighborhood, uh, just as an example. Um, and then the, the devastation was enormous. Uh, we have a lot of trees in our neighborhood, so it was really hard to get back. And then all the power lines were down because of the trees as well. It took, um, you know, uh, in, in, in our neighborhood up to 10 days before power got restored. Uh, internet came back after only two weeks, and with two teenage boys, that was a bigger problem, by the way. But 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 yeah, it, it, it's a huge impact. Um, and, and what's interesting in, in the broader context, Aaron, is that if you look at um, uh, the last 20 years, we had have we we had on average five major events in the U.S. with over a billion dollar of damage: uh, wildfire, storm, uh, winter storm, uh, hurricane. Um, in the last four years, that average has actually gone up to 12. So we're seeing these events more frequent, and we're seeing these events also having a bigger impact. In 2017, $350 billion of direct damage from these storms. So yes, we talk a lot with our clients about um, uh, climate change, about long-term climate risks, and how you know, uh, companies, uh, cities, states, or, or entire countries uh, can prepare themselves better. Uh, from a grid infrastructure perspective, uh, we, we will need to come up with solutions uh, where our grids are more resilient uh, and can actually uh, uh, anticipate these, these, these events uh, in a better way so that it doesn't have so much impact to you know, all, uh, uh, the, all, the entire community uh, as well as you know, businesses. Um, uh, I think 2019 will be about climate change, will be about long-term climate risk and creating more resiliency and, and adaptation into our systems. Um, and utilities are going to be a big part of that. Well, this is certainly, a, it's a long-term play, right, yeah. fighting climate yeah. change. But there are things that utilities can start to do today to yeah. help mitigate some of these issues that we're seeing arise. What can utilities do today to start implementing environmentally sustainable practices? Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's, there's very operational things like, um, you know, uh, many of the, the distribution poles in, in my area are, you know, concrete um, and instead of wooden poles. So, so there's very operational things that utilities can do as they strengthen the grid uh, and hardening the grid. Uh, there's, you know, uh, systems that can monitor floods and can kind of isolate uh, certain neighborhoods when there's a flood so that it doesn't impact the entire system and, and it causes more damage. So there's a lot of operational things I think that utilities can do. Um, we're actually now, uh, a, a team of mine is, is helping in Puerto Rico as well with building the, the grid of the future for Puerto Rico. So we're, we're talking a lot about how do you make a resilient grid in Puerto Rico that can sustain a 4.5 cat hurricane, for example. Um, that's short term. Long term, I think we all need to work towards an energy system that is more sustainable, uh, that is greener, um, that is you know uh, 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 less of a threat to the environment. Uh, uh, you saw the announcement this week of Excel Energy that they're going to go to 100% renewable. Uh, I think it's great. 
Um, we're not going to get there with only renewables and battery storage. Uh, we actually see a, a clean uh, fuel coming into the system, like hydrogen, for example. Uh, you can produce hydrogen from excess renewables. Uh, we see that coming in at scale so that we can actually have you know, a, a, a fuel available as well that is 100% renewable that we can use, you know, through these very cold winter weeks uh, as we, uh, that we have coming up now, so. We just spoke briefly and I was asking you about, you know, a certain technology that would be, yeah. play a major role in helping us build a more resilient, cleaner, greener grid. Yeah. But you actually believe it's going to be a lot of technologies coming together. Yeah. Can you describe kind of how that, what that vision looks like? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've, we've developed this, this vision called Energy Cloud and we've developed it five years ago. And I have a large team that does research around all new technologies that are out there. Uh, it's a team of 50 people. By the way, they're having a hard time keeping up with all the developments on the technology side. But we really believe in this um, a platform thinking. We believe that um, we will work towards a network of networks uh, with platforms around you know, the core grid, uh, uh, generation, transmission, distribution, but then also uh, adjacent platforms around, for example, transportation, electrification of transportation or buildings, how we can integrate buildings better into the grid and how can we manage energy usage across a set of buildings combined with like smart street lighting, for example. So we, see, we really see this industry morphing towards a, a network of networks where utilities actually play an orchestration role of those networks and optimize the total system cost. Uh, microgrids, I think, is, is another way of, of you know, a, a distributed energy resource, another example of a distributed energy resource that ultimately will be an adjacent platform that can be integrated into the grid. This platform of platform, this network of networks, um, uh, really uh, allows us to not only uh, 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 creates more sustainable solutions, but also more resiliency, ad ad adaptation, uh, and, and agility as well to it. Technologies like blockchain, uh, supporting transactive energy, peer-to-peer -peer trading, uh, 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 smarter technologies in terms of um, uh, how do you isolate certain parts of the grid, uh, how do you manage load uh, from you know, uh, uh, EVs that we will have available at some time at, at a significant scale. How do you use that as a resource and, and use it to uh, reduce peak load, for example? There will be a lot of those type of technology that are coming into the system. And uh, our, our system is actually moving towards what we call a neural grid, where, you know, we're going to need to see some of the self-healing uh, capabilities and algorithms as well to manage that very complex system of, of you know, millions, trillions of different uh, uh, assets, uh, resources and devices on the grid. You said earlier that you think climate change is really going to be a, a prevalent topic and be talked a lot about next year. Yeah. What else, or aside from climate change, or you can also t tell us about why you think climate change is going to be talked yeah. about a lot next year, but what else are you looking forward to in 2019? Yeah, in, in tw 2019, I, th I think it will be about climate change. Um, uh, it, it will also be about, you know, again, grid modernization. A lot of utilities uh, have um, uh, rolled out, uh, uh, you know, uh, significant plans to further modernize the grid, which I think is important. Uh, make it more resilient, make it smarter, enable it to integrate uh, higher levels of renewables uh, uh, as well as distribution resources. The other thing we're seeing in, in 19 is uh, customers are becoming more and more sophisticated, specifically the large uh, uh, commercial industrial customers we see them really thinking about uh, how they can decarbonize their, their own footprint, their manufacturing processes, their logistic processes, uh, their warehouses. Um, and we're seeing them uh, become uh, a lot more advanced uh, in, in implementing solutions with or without utility. And I think they would like to do it with the utility, but the utility really has to step up to serve their large commercial industrial customers because they will uh, uh, look for solutions that will help them decarbonize their own operations uh, and it goes to the core of their operations. This is not about, you know, corporate sustainability where, you know, um, uh, they, they're trying to save waste or they're trying to replace, you know, plastic cups. This is about how do they decarbonize their manufacturing and, process, uh, and, and logistics processes and how do they, you know, uh, uh, really change the way they use or produce energy to support their business. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down and talk with us. I hope that your community and your family stay safe in the upcoming years. And, uh, but really, thank you for just taking a few minutes out of your day to talk. You're welcome. Thank you, Aaron.